everyone, this is your instructor Joy. Today we are going to talk about string crossings in Baroque pieces. We are going to take um, Handel Valley Sonata number one. This will be also answered to a subscriber. Thank you very much. This subscriber was wondering how to play this fast movement where it has a lot of string crossings from A to the E string or vice versa. So this, I will play a little so that you get to hear how it sounds like. As you can see, there's a lot of multiple notes and string crossing happening. String crossing happening from A to E. And then reverse in E to A. Now, it is very important when you play a baroque piece that you do not play too short. Meaning, when you play Mozart's sixteenth note, we often play a little spring bow or other classical tunes using a lower half bow, like that. But when you're playing baroque pieces, um, remember the Baroque era, they had different type of bow. They had a bow a little curved the other way. So there was no such thing as a spring bow. Uh, you might have seen um, periodical instrument players. So they even hold the bow a little higher. You don't have to go that extreme, but it would be a good idea to, um, for us to play the style of the music. In this case, it's Handel which is a very um, well-known Baroque piece. So make sure you use rather legato strokes than staccato or spiccato by using upper half bow, yeah? yeah? Not only it is a right style for uh, Baroque era music, but also it makes it easier. So um, often in my teaching studio, um, first mistake a lot of students make is just play in the wrong spot of the bow. So they say 16th note and then often a violinist want to use near a fro where you think the angle of the string crossing is small. So a lot of violinists think that might be a smart thing. It is true. However, um, when you go the other way from E to A, it is, even though the angle from E to A is much smaller, the, you're using very heavy part of bow. So it is, you actually have to work a lot with a heavy bow and it sounds quite heavy and then it's going to be hard for you to control. So move bow away from the frog even though the angle from E to A is much larger, but believe me, it is easier. I'll show you soon how to exercise those strokes. A uh, second uh, common mistake a lot of artists make is understand when you're doing um, string crossings in a fast tempo, you don't have time to adjust your elbow or shoulder for each string the way you would do in long bow like this, right? So when you use long notes, we lower our, our whole arm, so it works for E string, and then when you go A string, we raise our whole arm, like that. But if you do like this in a fast stroke, you will exhaust yourself, and you're gonna slow down without wanting it, because it's very hard to be fast. You see, you're moving too many body parts, and they will not sound good and it's gonna just have a lot of waste energy. So the way you do it so it sounds efficient, in tempo and beautiful is like this. So have your shoulder still in a relaxed way, not stiff still, but keep it somewhat in the same spot. You will be moving your forearm and your wrist and then keep your thumb very relaxed so that your hand goes where the, wherever the bow goes. And as an exercise, it would be good for you to do in front of the mirror. 
try to use a half, upper half bow or a third near the tip. Use flat hair because you will need all, all the sound that you can get. And then use the string crossing starting AE, then later EA, using only your forearm and wrist like this. Just make sure your whole body parts are relaxed. Still, shoulder, shoulder not moving in a relaxed way. You're moving on your forearm, wrist, and then keep your thumb relaxed. Until you feel like you have complete control without moving your shoulder too much. And now you try this time, reverse, E and A string. shoulder stays where it should be in a relaxed way. If you feel comfortable, you gradually increase the speed. It's very important when you do this motion that your thumb and wrist and forearm moves freely while keeping your shoulder in a one place, in a relaxed way. Like that. And then if you feel like you're ready to do and see with a left hand note, see if it works. And the other way. Like that. So that's a technical part of the string crossing in barrel pieces that you can try. And musical point, um, violinist has to understand when there are multiple notes, whether it's a string crossing or fast runs or running up or down, we have to understand what is important musically here. Because if you play everything equally loud, equally, str equally strong, it's just too much to the listener. They get tired and it's just not interesting. So in this case, there is one moving, there is a repeating E, and there's another door. What do you think which is important? Repeating same note or the moving note? Yes, the moving note is more interesting. So what you do is put, uh, adjust your elbows slightly higher so that you can have a little more weight on the moving notes. So, so, so this comes out a little more. Thank you. Bye.